Miss Ellis. She is from Memphis. Uh, she went to TSU and MTSU. Yeah. Uh, she's a professor at Lipscomb and consultant there. In her own words, she says, I teach what I do, and I do what I teach. She helps people better with their communication, culture, diversity, change, and community. She's also an author of a book, The Original Millennial. She started her first business when she was 14, and um, she's gonna be talking to us about personal leadership. Uh, she's gonna be starting with vision, voice, and values. Also, she has six lessons of leadership from her own book. So let's give a nice warm welcome to her. What we're talking about when we talk about innovation in the community of leadership is culture. We have to first start there before we begin to talk about real leadership. Culture is a way of life. Many times when we think of the word culture, we think of race, age, gender, ethnicity, religion, your background, where you're from, or even uh, how you vote, etc. But culture, at its simplest form, the definition is that culture is a way of life. It's organic. It can grow from anywhere. It can emerge from anywhere. What we have to realize about leadership before we can really dig into it, and we talk about culture, is that culture always changes. It shifts the norm. One of the key things that leaders must realize that they have to do is sometimes shift the norm. I want to tell you a little bit about how that happened for me early on in life at age 14. So as we think about that, we realize that there's always this culture shift that's always happening, and how do we navigate that? The frustrating part, a frustrating part of it is that culture or change is complex. There's so much happening in our world. How do we navigate it all? We get frustrated. There's resistance from one generation to the next. There's anxiety because sometimes we don't know what decision to make. There's also confusion because who knows the rules? Is they change. But when we go about our, our, our daily lives, when we go about our careers, we have to think about what are the what's the foundation for all of that? And I want to give you three things. And go ahead and get your uh, program with the uh, notes in the back. And I'm going to talk you through this. And what I have for you here is a personal leadership brand map. And we're going to talk through this a little bit. You will get this handout. Um, at the end of the day or at the end of your, at the end of your uh, time here, you'll get this handout to take home with you. And I'm going to give you some examples of things I want you to write down and give you a few minutes to think about it, and I'll facilitate that for you. But this will be your personal leadership brand map. And the three things that we want to cover is vision, voice, and value. Vision, voice, and value. I believe there's a section in your program where you can take a few notes, all right? Now, let's start with vision. Vision is the ability of the state of being able to see. We know that, right? From, a, from a, just a general definition perspective as a noun, right? But there's another definition of vision. Vision is the act or the power of anticipating that which will or may come. So many times when you hear people say, I have a vision, that is what we mean, or that, that's what they mean when they say, I have a vision. It's something that you can't quite see in front of you, but you realize or you hope that it will come to pass. You have the will or the power to be able to anticipate something. So as you think about vision, I'm going to share with you just some key words that work for me that are a part of my vision. And what I'd like for you to do, I'm going to give you a prompt. I'd like for you to write down some words that come to mind for your vision. For my vision, the things that I see for myself or even saw for myself at 14 when I was asking all these questions about, you know, why are communities the way they are? Why are businesses the way they are? Why don't we see more multiculturalism? Why don't I see this happening in our world, et cetera? 
I started to determine what kind of vision I wanted for myself because since I didn't see those things, I wanted to see those things. I anticipated that those things would be better and improve in the community. So my words were, I wanted to teach, lead, inspire, and prosper. And I wanted to do those things on my own terms. And what I'd like you to do is write down things that you see they haven't happened yet, but you hope that they will. And you feel that these things are part of your vision. Maybe try three to five things, even if you just have to do a few words. Think, what things are part of my vision? What are some of the things that I see that haven't happened yet that I want to ultimately happen? Either in my world, in my community, maybe in my family, right? What would be a part of my vision? What is a voice? We know what a voice is, of course, but let's talk about it in a leadership sense. A voice is a right to express a particular viewpoint or opinion. That's one way we can think about voice. Another way we can define voice is a distinct tone or style of a literary work, meaning how you write or how you speak, right? The words that you use, not just necessarily your language, but maybe your, your personality of how you communicate. Your voice is also, this is important, your voice is also this utterance, kind of in the back of your mind, this soft, kind of guiding spirit in your ear. As I said, in the back of your mind or deep in your heart, that's giving you instruction or advice. What is that inner voice that you may have? So you can look at voice in a variety of different ways. We have vision as a leader, that's kind of where it starts. Then we have voice, we have to figure out how do we allow our voice to come to fruition in the ways that we see things, the way that we communicate them, the way that we talk about them. I decided I wanted to communicate my voice through a couple of ways. I found five words that I thought communicated my voice most effectively. Their culture, communication, diversity, community, and change. Now, write down the ways that you think your voice can be most effective. So you've got your vision. These are the things that you see that haven't happened yet, but you know that they have the possibility to happen. Now you have voice. How do I put those things into a way where they can be spoken? How do I actually put those, sow those seeds and allow those things to be communicated effectively. Or, as I gave three, three definitions of voice, or what are the things that I am passionate about and I want to be a, a, a communicator for? I want to be a champion for these things and I will lend my voice to speaking out or for or in support of or against these specific things as a young leader. Take a few minutes, think about my vision, what do I envision, and then how am I going to communicate that through the ways that I write, through the ways that I speak, through the things that I speak out against or for, through the decisions that I make, how I communicate, what will my voice be? All right, vision, the things we see that haven't quite happened yet, but we believe they're possible. Voice, the way we communicate and advocate for those things and let people know what we stand for as a leader. And then values. Talk a little bit about values earlier. A couple of definitions for the word value or values. Value is to the regard to which something is of importance or worth or, worth or usefulness. Your values are also your principles, your standard of behavior. Also, value is something that you consider to hold in high regard. You consider something that's important or beneficial. My values, there we go. Things that I care about. I care about faith, education, people, empowerment, and freedom. Those are the values that I have at my core that guide me not only as a, as a leader, but just as a person in general. So take a moment, 
jot down, what are my values? Do I care most about? Now notice I didn't say family, but what are family? People, right? <laughs> so that means that they're covered in that. I may care about certain aspects of people in different ways, right, for different reasons, but I still care about people. I care about you all, I've not met you, I just met you, I still care about you, right? So you fall into that category too. I also care about love, but for me, I think love kind of fits into the faith aspect of my values, right? So think about what are the things that you value most and how do they play out as a leader? Jot some of those words down real quickly. What do you care about most at your core, at your very being, at the deepest part of you? Because that's how you determine what kind of leader you're going to be.